Shalom Vocha, Shalom Aleichem, dear sisters and brothers. We know we're very thankful to the Creator for allowing us to be part of this beautiful and gorgeous creation, to take part in, in its completion. It's our job and our mission and our role in this lifetime to, to gather the four wings of the universe and to, and to make one unit out of this world that all the separations and all the dividings, that all the differences that we feel and that we can see with our eyes um, will not block us from remembering the true inner connection that we have to all life forms, to all souls on earth. And that's our mission, the main mission, to remember I'm a soul. I'm a soul, I'm not only the body, the body is what that carries me. My body is the vehicle that transfers me from one place to the other that I can use for certain physical uses in this world. But the real truth being of who I am is a heavenly portion, is a godly soul. And for that a person must wake himself up to remember that great lesson every day. On a daily basis, a person must run away from this world to a place of quiet, must meditate, must do it bodhidut, must find a place for you to reconnect yourself to your soul, to your spirit, to your neshama. And while you are in a quiet place, you must just allow the inner voice of your spirit take place, to allow your inner feeling express itself. You can be happy, you can be sad, you can be broken, you can be very hopeful with great yearnings and hopes. You can pray, you can ask, you can request, you can fight, you can argue, you can judge, you can, you can demand certain things and to, to, to explain why you can't expect, accept certain things. Must be honest though. Must be the one that your soul is sending you to be. And it's a very great challenge and this is why darkness is overpowering the world and shading and blocking our eyesight from understanding the ab amazing ability and true potential we have. Because there is something that is called the jealousy, the envious of, of the angels. When the Creator wanted to create us, so first He created angels. He created those servants to do certain things in, in His mission, to, his, to follow His commands. And they were very happy to have that job. And they were also been built and designed in a wonderful way that they will not sin. Because they are made out of holy fire and the sweat of those holy angels is in a greater heat than the strongest fire that we know um, on earth, exists on earth. And there's something so spiritual and so divine that they're just following the commandments of God. They don't have no doubt and when he's telling them you should do this, you should do that, immediately they're running and jumping and flying and doing the, the best that they can in a moment. But when they suddenly realized that the Creator wants to send souls down to earth, not only animals, not only trees and flowers, fish and birds, also human beings, to enjoy a godly soul, a soul that is not built only by spirit, also by a soul. A soul is neshama. And the Neshama is Elokit, is godly. And when they saw that someone will be physically earthen, made out of earth, made out of mud, with skin, flesh and bones, and will also have a holy soul inside of him, they realized how complex it's going to be. It was very hard for them to think that the godly soul, that the portion of heaven that is so precious and they held it as such divine and important thing will go 
and might be humiliated and ashamed and destroyed in filth by negative and bad actions of filthy bodies that made out of earth, made out of mud. And they were right in that aspect. It's true. We can take our souls to wherever we go. If you decide now to go to the lowest place on earth, to the most filthiest place on earth, and you start making that journey, you're pulling your soul with you to that low place, to that low way of life. And there is nothing in the world that can stop you. When you decide to crash, when you decide to fall, when you allow yourself to, to give up and to allow all your, your negativity to, to flow and to overpower and, and your bad and evil inclination to, to rule, no one can stop a person from murdering, from raping, from killing, from, from abusing, from, from, from torturing another person. We saw horrific, horrible things took place on earth by humans, by people, by people that had souls. And they went and violated the codes in every possible way. And the angels, they could predict that. They saw that those things for sure will happen and they did not want those disgraceful thing, things to happen and to disrespect the Creator. That the shame will, will, will reflect on the Creator who created this creation. And therefore, they stood all united and asked from the Creator not to create human beings, not to send those precious souls into bodies. But the Creator refused to listen to them because the Creator, He has something in Him because of His greatness, because He's not a portion, He's not a part, He's not divided. He's the unity itself. He is the only one who can see the whole picture. He's the only one that understands everything from all its aspects. And all the creations, they can be great, they can be huge, they can be gigantic, they can be super holy and hero and, and fantastic, magnificent. They won't have the complete observation on the complete picture, on the whole wide world's um, as, uh, um, purpose and 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 therefore they could not see what he was hoping to achieve by sending the holy souls down to earth and what he hoped to achieve exactly what it goes on with you and with me in our days he wanted to see that even from the lowest place on earth, the souls will be strong enough to desire the truth with all they might, with all their power. And he sees that. And we are now so close, and this is why those days are the closest days that we ever had to days of Mashiach, because we never fell so low. We never reached rock bottom in such a disgraceful way like we are today. That today you have horrible things that are happening. People experienced horrible abuse and horrible, horrible traumas in their childhood, in their youth, and in, in, in so many aspects of our lives. People are so broken. You have people that are suffering tremendously in horrible ways, in, in ways that we can never even like explain, that no one even can share his own experience with others people that has been raped since their childhood by their parents, by their siblings, by their closest friends to their families, by their teachers, by, by people that they put their trust on, people that have been abused, people that have been ashamed, people that have been hurt, that have been bullied, people that have been robbed, people that have been destroyed, like in so many ways and aspects. And, and we know about those things. You have... Um, children trafficking and women trafficking and like people are being killed for no reason people are being destroyed people's properties and money and honor and respect does not m mean anything in the eyes of of governors of 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 horrible people that are using their power for for their own agendas to gather money only for themselves and power only for themselves and the publics are suffering in crazy pain and from that horrible darkness from that horrible abuse
people are waking up to break the patterns of this world and to desire the Creator and to want heaven more than anything else in life. And those ones who are doing that, those are the heroes that are crowning the Creator on heavens and earth. Those are the ones who are showing to the angels who are always judging us and angry about us and criticizing us and bringing um, horrible judgments and decrees on our heads all the time because of their jealousy, because that they don't want the name of Hashem, of the Creator, to be disgraced. We are those ones who are showing them that they were wrong and that the Creator was right for choosing to believe in Himself. And even though that all His advisors told Him not to do that, even the attribute of truth told Him not to create human beings because they are about to lie and they will be liars. And it's true, we are lying many, many times. Every person is failing or at least failed in that so many times in his lifetime. And people are liars, people are lying all the time. And the Creator Himself rejected that opinion, even though that came out of a word that speaks only the truth. He rejected that and He wanted to show to the world and to everyone exist under the wings of His Godly Spirit that there is a real truth. There is a higher and more divine truth. And that honorable decision of the Creator to send us to a very great and dangerous mission was the one who in the future or even now is already taking place but maybe in a dimension that is behind our eyes that we cannot see it fully but the verse is saying G'dulatenu ve'tifaratenu yegale meshech tzidkenu It's a saying, it's not a verse Gdulatenu vetifartenu, our greatness and our glory, the true Messiah will reveal. Yegalem Shechzidkenu, the righteous one. He will reveal that thing to the world. He will show how great we are, how great I am, how great you are, how great they are. And you just need to focus on that, to recognize the fact that you are a soul, that you are a godly soul. Now for me it's very easy to tell you but listen to your own self to your own voice and like start thinking about that aspect of your life how amazing you are instead of listening all day long to that spiritual judgment excuse my French crap of judge, judgments and criticism and, and negativity and self-blame and self-slaughter of your thoughts all day long to break your self-esteem and to kill you. Oh, you woke up late. Look how you were praying. What have you done? Now you ruined again. You spoiled it. You messed up. You don't have a chance. You're never going to get that. You're never going to get this. You won't make it. You're never going to succeed. You're a failure. Again, you messed up. You, you, you disappointed them. They disappointed you. There's no hope. All those negative thoughts that are attacking you like lights in the darkness, like shooting arrows of light on you, blinding you, like lightnings, destroying you all day long, planting ne negativity and fear. It's an abuse. It's your own mind abused, being played by those angels and you have the power to prevent that negative energy on you and on your loved ones if you're going to attach yourself to the spirit of Mashiach if you're going to connect yourself to the spirit that is hovering above the water of Torah it's written in the Zohar Kadosh on the verse and the spirit of God is hovering above the water and the Zohar Kadosh is saying that is the spirit of Messiah of Mashiach the true Mashiach spirit is hovering above the water. And I asked once, why the spirit of Mashiach will not hover in the water? If the water is the Torah, 
like we know that it's written, Hoi kol tzameh Every person that is thirsty needs to go to the water. We are thirsty. We have been dried out. We need water. We go and we drink water. You need spiritual guidings. You go and you open the, open the holy books. You go and listen to words of Torah, words of mis- wisdom, and you want to learn Torah. So the spirit is coming from the water of the Torah itself. No. It's written that the spirit of Mashiach is hovering above the water. Why is it above the water? Why did the purification will not come from the water themselves, from the Torah? Because some of us are not able to understand what that is written. And the Mashiach, he can understand that. He can understand that you're not able even to understand the language. He understands that you don't have the budget even to buy a Siddur book. He can understand that in your location there is no Amazon Prime to send you the books that you require, the needed for your conversion or for your tshuva or for your learnings or teachings or for whatever you need. He knows that sometimes a person can crash so damn hard that there will be no one to save him and to give him a hand. And therefore, the spirit of Mashiach is hovering above the water. Even for those ones who just desire to open the book. Even for those ones who just want and willing to read but they don't know how to. The spirit of Mashiach, the positive spirit, that healthy and healing energy is already available for them, already purifying them, already washing them and cleaning them and cleansing them and washing all filth and sadness from them. And that positive mindset is the positive mindset that we are receiving from that righteous one, from the godly Messiah that he is waking up the souls to believe in themselves and to realize, like that we said, that amazing and ancient saying, that that our glory and our greatness will be revealed by Mashiach Tzidkenu. He will show you how great you are. You, 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 not him. He will not go and praise himself. Oh no, me, I'm the Messiah. Did you hear Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, going and telling everyone, you don't know me, I am Moshe Rabbeinu, I spoke with this, I spoke with that. Never. They're humble people. They are more humble than we can imagine. They're just looking for a place to hide. They don't want to talk and they don't want to be seen. But they see that there is no other choice. So they have to break out to save lives of people. They see people are drowning. They don't want to jump into the water, but there are people drowning, so they are jumping. They don't look for swimming in pools. They see people drowning, so they jump. They see us in struggle, therefore they're jumping for our Savior, to save us for our saving. They're jumping to save us from the worst places on earth. And where are those dark places? Where you feel despair, in the place that you feel sad and broken with low self-esteem and with zero power and zero hope. In that place, suddenly there is an inner voice that is talking to you from within. And that voice is the voice of Mashiach. It does not mean that you are Mashiach. It means that the spirit of Mashiach is hovering above the water of Torah and reaching you right now. And you can reach it as well. And you should listen to that positive mindset to remind to yourself that if you now, from that horrible place of despair and sorrow and pain and grief, if you're going to crown Hashem on yourself, if you're going to remind yourself that you are a godly soul on mission, that you are here on earth with a purpose to reveal His godliness and to follow Him with all your heart and with all you might, with all the power, all the energy, all the soul, Sources, all the wisdom, all the, the, the qualities you have, all the, the tools that have been provided to you, to use them for that amazing purpose of revealing the light of the Creator in the darkness. By that you're going to prove that the angels were completely wrong and that they did not see the complete picture that the Creator must be praised and honor and respect even in the darkest places of them all. And our greatness and our glory is that we will never give up on the knowledge 
of our greatness and our glory that you will remember that you are a godly soul that you're trying so hard to do good and you're finding yourself lost and confused and being crushed and destroyed over and over and over again and again and again and not giving up and that is your greatness that you don't know what the meaning of the word despair is that you don't know what it means to back off or to give up it's not in your program you have never been programmed for that that's your greatness that you are a person of truth and you're marching and continuing and walking and marching and climbing and carving the path for yourself and for others with all due respect to all other opinions if you go and hear other opinions of people that are teaching and those teachings are breaking your spirit and destroying your self-esteem because the rabbi or the teacher or the mentor or whoever is talking to you is judging you and criticizing you and blaming you and threatening you do a favor to yourself and don't listen to that noise anymore don't don't let it kill you don't let it break your self-esteem remember the simple and innocent faith you had when you were young when you were a kid when you were a brat running in the fields playing running chasing after squirrels or a ball running for your life remembering life life sweet taste remember the smell of the flowers remember the sunrise and the sunsets remember the joy and satisfaction of just being alive of opening a candy of reading a nice book of watching a nice television show with your friends holding hands with your friends with your family remember the joyful moments of your life where you felt the supervision of the creator and don't give up and don't drop your dreams remember you are here to achieve your goals spiritually and physically and we must unite we must remember you know what's the what's what's what is the real meaning of a Muna project do you know what a Muna project is really all about it's only a place for us good friends to be together that's the only thing it's a place of real friends that's what it is a Muna project is a group of friends that believe in each other and believe in themselves in their own goodness and just going and doing the best that they can for others that's what we do we're just being honest friends truthful friends we're just here to help each other and to do good for the world for the benefit of all human race from all for all animals for all creations and we just love everyone and we just care about everyone's success I'm receiving hundreds of messages every day just from Africa people from Zambia people from Nigeria people from Kenya people from Mozambique people from from South Africa people from all around the world people on daily basis sending us messages not Jewish people not Jewish people people who desires to become Israelis who become wants to become Jewish people who desires to to come closer to the truth who wants to visit the Holy Land hundreds of messages every day from Europe from Netherlands from Germany I have such good friends from Europe you can't imagine from the United Kingdom from France from Germany so many people are contacting us from Italy from Spain two days ago I had a phone conversation with a friend from Spain an amazing soul a farmer that lives in the village and he loves the nation of Israel and he loves the Torah and he is a supporter of our work and doing such an amazing things for for the world where are they coming from if not from a spiritual place if not that their soul is calling them to go out to the world and to shine and to love and to care amazing people in Arab countries people from Jordan from Egypt I have people that are contacting me for in the last two three years all the time on whatsapp 
when I lived in the Holy Land of Israel they were not able to contact me because the, if someone is contacting Israel on social media immediately they're arresting him in the, on those lands but since I moved here to the US no one is checking on them and they're chatting with us if it's on emails, if it's on Facebook, if it's on all social media outlets and especially on WhatsApp talking to me and sending messages from Saudi Arabia, from Iran, from Iraq. It, you, you can never imagine what's going on online. It's, 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 it's a revolution. It's, it's, it's an amazing thing that is happening. And why is it happening? How does it happen? It happens because those souls are real souls that are connected to the nation of Israel and they're coming back and that's it and no one will be able to stop them. And that's our nature. And that's the end of the of of the song. That's the end of 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 this amazing har philharmonic m musical that is called the world. That's it. This is the end. The souls are coming back to who they really are, seeing and recognizing their glory and their beauty and their greatness. And they just want Hashem with all their heart. They want the Torah with all their heart. They are desiring the Holy Land with all their hearts. They want to be attached and connected. And the Creator is doing it. The Creator is doing it. I bless you to be partners with us and to support our work and our amazing project. And I'm asking you that as a personal favor to me and to the amazing people who depends in this project to support our work. We are a non-profit organization that Every penny that comes in goes immediately straight to that amazing charity of shining and illuminating the world with the light of faith. Count on my word and recognize the honesty of my words and put your gold where it belongs to support the souls of our siblings, to support the ones who are in great need of spiritual guidings. And those souls are waking up and waking up back to life and we're going to experience the complete redemption and the complete salvation the resurrection of the dead and the revealing of his mighty his greatness in the most beautiful day of them all the eternal day the long day day of redemption in our days amen can you hear that song thank you the world is not existing because Olam Milchon Elem, the world is just blocking the light of truth. The world called Alma de Shika, world of light, is just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. It's just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. Okay.